Now we know a bit more about stateless functional components, we can actually refactor our counter example and make it more reusable. We're going to refactor these buttons and create a stateless functional component that's going to be far more reusable. I've got the counter from the previous video open here. Exactly the same. We've got our three buttons, got our increment count method, render method, get initial state. The first thing I'm going to do is create our stateless functional component. To do this, we're going to declare a variable called button. And as you know, stateless functional components are just functions. And we're going to pass in props. The props are going to be the value and the function we pass in. Our button, our stateless functional component, is going to return a button. And this button is going to contain the word add and then a value. Now we don't want to hard code a value in. So let's go ahead and use props.value. So whatever value we pass in to our stateless functional component on the value keyword is going to get rendered to there. We're also going to pass that into the component itself. So props.value. So this is going to be the increment value. We're also going to pass in an onClick property. So this is going to be a click handler. So we're going to pass in this function here. And of course, we're going to pass the value in as well. And I spelled handler wrong. Now, to make this component much more reusable, we're actually going to use properties on our state for component. Because we don't want to pass in these values here. We want to pass them in either here or have default properties so that we don't pass them in here. It's still going to work. So let's go ahead and define our default properties. So get default props, which of course is a function. Don't forget your comma. And it simply returns an object. Now we're going to have a value one. Which is just going to be one. We're going to have a value two, which is going to be five, and a value three, which is going to be ten. So these are going to be our default properties. They obviously match what we've currently got. So what we're going to do now is delete our current buttons and replace them with our stateless functional component. So it's going to be button with a capital B, remember, because this is a component. And we're going to pass in the props of value, which is going to be equal this.props.value1, because we're going to pass in this value. Then going to pass in a click handler so it's going to be the on click event is our click handler. So I spelt wrong. I'm going to pass in this dot increment count. And we're going to have to bind this to the component again. And we're going to pass in the value. So this dot props dot value one. And that's it. That is our component. It's going to be reusable. So all we need to do is just copy that for the other two buttons. So button, the value, this dot props dot value two, and the click handler equals this dot increment count. I'm going to bind that again to the component 
I'm going to pass in this dot props dot value two, and close that off. I'm going to put a space there. Let's go ahead and do it for our final button as well. This dot props dot value three. Our click handler, which of course is this dot increment count. And of course, we have to bind that to the component and then pass in the parameter, which is going to be value three. And then close that off. So that's going to be a reusable component. Hopefully, hopefully it all works. Let's check it out. So here we go. We've got our three buttons. They've got no styling at the moment because they haven't got any classes, class names on them. We've got our count. Let's check if they work. There we go. We've added one, we've added five, and we've added 10. I'm actually gonna go ahead and put our classes on the component as well. You might want to use different classes on each component and rather than putting them on the component when it's rendered, let's pass them in as props. So class name equals props.style. So now we can pass in style to our component. So let's pass in BTN, let's close that off. BTN, blue BTN. And we can do that for each of our components. So BTN, green BTN. And again, for our final button, button. And this one's purple, purple button. So save that, head on over to the browser and refresh. And there we go, we've got our style back. Now, we can actually make this slightly more reusable. Well, I already have, to be honest, because using the get default props means we don't actually have to use one, five, and 10. We can actually pass in any values we want. So we can pass in on value one, 100. And on value two, 1,000. And on value three, 10,000. Save that and head on back over to the browser. And there we go. Our buttons instantly update. And every time we click on them, the value updates to the new value. Although our component is pretty reusable at the moment, I think we can do a little bit better. I think we can get rid of the add here and use a property. Let's go ahead and delete that and replace it with props.text. Now we'll be able to pass in whatever text we want to show inside the button. In our stateful component, in the get default props method, go ahead and add a default property for the text. In this case, I think add is probably the best. Now on our stateful component and the button stateless functional components, Go ahead and add a text property, which is going to be this dot props dot text plus we're going to put a space. It's not great. I think we can do better than that later on. And then this dot props dot value one. And this should make it a bit more reusable. Let's check it out. And there we go. Obviously these buttons have no text because we're not passing any in at the moment, but we've still got our, our 100 button working perfectly fine. Go ahead and replicate that for the other two buttons. This.props.text plus this.props.value2. And for the third button, So this.props.text plus our space 
plus this dot props dot value three. Save that and head on back over to the browser. And there we go. Our component is working the same way as before. Now I think our component is pretty reusable. So why don't we make a new button and make it do something else. Let's not give it any style for the moment. I think we're going to make this button just display an alert when we click it. Set the text to perhaps alert and the on click handler, so the click handler to this dot alert and we can close that off. We can go ahead and write the alert function which is just simply going to display an alert. Nothing too fancy. So let's just alert button clicked. Pretty boring, but there we go. Save that and head on back over to the browser. And we should have our alert button and we click it and we get an alert. I think we can do a bit better than hard coding a space in using two pluses and a space like that. It's not very nice at all. And we can solve this problem using ES6. In ES6, string interpolation has been upgraded a little bit. We can now, using backticks, interpolate values into strings and don't have to use plus and then our value like we are at the moment. So using the back tick, which on my keyboard is just above the control and the alt to the left of the Z key, we can put a back tick at the front of the string we want to interpret and at the back of the string. Now anything between these two back ticks is going to get rendered as a string. Let's delete those. So at the moment, the string that's going to get rendered to the browser, to the DOM, is this.props.text and this dot props dot value. I'm just going to save that and show you how that looks. Obviously this is not what we want at the moment. So you can see there this dot props dot text, this dot props dot value. So what we can do is we can actually interpolate these values here. And we do that using a dollar and then a curly brace. Wrap the entire string we want to interpolate in a dollar and then curly braces. And that's going to get the value, the dynamic value that we need. Save that and let's check it out. And there we go, add 100 with our space. It's much cleaner, much easier to read and understand what's going on. Let's do that for both the second and third button. So the back tick wraps our string, get rid of the plus and the space interpolate those values using dollar sign and a curly brace. Do that for the value and let's do it for the last one as well. Delete those, get rid of the extra space, dollar curly brace, close that curly brace, dollar curly brace and close that. Save that, check it out again. And there we go, exactly the same. It's all working, brilliant. And of course our alert works as well now. You can see here how using a stateless functional component has made a really reusable button. We haven't got a single hard coded value into the button, but we're able to give it an on-click handler, the inner HTML, a value, and class names, which is brilliant. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed my video, please like, share, and subscribe. If you've got any comments, suggestions, or ideas for videos, leave them in the comments below. Send me a tweet at codewithtim, or send me an email, codewithtim at gmail.com.